Thank you for watching this week's tip of the week. We're on a project here that is basically ready to be swept and compacted. However, there are a few steps needed to be taken before you get to that process. We're gonna walk through those steps one by one, starting with looking for X's in your pattern. So generally when I'm laying a three-piece pattern, I myself, I'm always watching for X's. However, if you get to the point you're ready to sweep in, just go back through it. Make sure it didn't get overlooked. Somebody else is laying the pattern or whatnot. Make sure you look for those X's. A full-fledged mason, he would never lay an X in his patio. Um, it goes kind of against the grain of masonry standards where you have X's that can allow movement laterally and horizontally. In this case, it's probably more of a preference and more of a visual, uh, for at least for myself and for, and for many that are out there. So something to watch for if this is a concern to you. We have a video that's dedicated towards X-less patterns and you can watch that here. So another area we like to watch for is not long continuous lines, especially on a three piece such as this random pattern. You don't want to get those long continuous lines because that's exactly what your eye is going to be drawn to seeing those long lines when you're looking at the pattern from a distance. If I had a recommendation, I would limit it to at least probably five at the most. And you can see here I got five blocks in a row here long. So the way you would obviously try to adjust that is to break back into the pattern and break that up. But five probably being the longest that you would want in a pattern such as this. Another thing I'd like to point out is stains on your patio. Sometimes, obviously in construction, you're gonna get some dirt, you're gonna get some debris. These generally are not impregnated into the pores of the pavers, but just a surface stain. That will come out when you generally sweep, compact the abrasiveness of your joint fill material, acts as kind of sandpaper, and it'll take those out. However, you get a stain such as this, this is a leaf stain, and that can really get down into there, and you really need some type of a, a cleaner to be able to get this out. So that's really what I want to watch for, making sure that I'm not going to sweep and come back and all of a sudden you have a stain that you can't get out unless you're back to your shop getting some kind of cleaner um, to take that out. So something to watch for. Other things to watch for, efflorescence, heavy efflow. Generally, you don't even want to lay that if it's real bad. You want to just be careful because some customers get it that it will dissipate over time. Other customers are really meticulous and they're going to be like, don't put that in. I do not want that on my patio. So those are other things you really got to pay attention to and know your customer. Next, you want to straighten out these lines. Pick the nice spot here, nice and straight. Got several joints I can go off of, even on a random pattern. Pull that nice and tight. And it looks pretty decent, but you can see there's a couple spots here. I'm out of whack. So just a matter of getting our dual adjuster in here. Adjusting these back a little bit. And then going back into the pattern here, you want to make sure you don't over adjust and make things too far out of balance. You can check out. So you're looking really nice right there. So that looks nice. So another area of interest when straightening your lines and just before you do that final compaction, watch for some of the debris in your joints. This here is a number nine stone. So if you're using a number eight or number nine, it can get stuck in the lugs of your boots. And then when you go walking from off the patio onto the patio, you can see here, I got some of these small stones. These act as little wedges that can get down in there. And when you compact, it can kind of separate then where all of a sudden you see a, a line that's out of whack. So just walking through and noticing, you may not get every stone, but some of these obvious ones, even this one, it's wedged in here. I can hardly get that out. <clears throat> I got it. But those act as wedges and that can disrupt your line straightening. Another area of extreme importance is to watch for those chips. Broken pieces, you want to be super careful that you don't go sweeping and compacting and then only realize you have to take one out because that can become quite a grueling task. So make sure you do a thorough walkthrough watching for chips, watching for hairline cracks. Even sometimes in the uh, concrete, the cement, you can get little pieces of debris that sometimes might work their uh, way to the surface, you want to watch for those. Make sure you take care of it before you sweep in. So another area of importance is make sure your gapping is correct. On your border, even within your payers, if you're doing any cutting, you're taking off that spacer bar. If you have block-to-block -block contact, you're getting a lot of friction in those areas and you can expect chipping, especially if you have a crisp cut that comes all the way to the surface. So in a particular area like this, you have those cuts that come all the way to the top. We want to make sure we have at least the putty's width knife um, of gap here 
and I will do. I'll adjust this. I want this fanning to look nice and consistent, but I'll make sure I get that gapping in here and we'll sweep before we compact to lock that in so it holds that nice and tight. And I'm not gonna get when I vibrate and I get that shifting a little bit with the compaction, I'm not gonna get these corners blowing out. Very important part, make sure you get gapping between products, even in this area here, you wanna make sure you can get that joint material down through, make it nice and straight and consistent. So once edging is installed and right before I compact, I wanna make sure that I don't have any gaps in here. And on a particular area like this where you have some sharp bends, you wanna fill some of these little gaps where these areas make these tight joints. So I'll just take my broom and I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna back this up a little bit. And again, that acts as little wedges, fills right into those joints. And what I don't get with this, as far as the joint, this'll keep it when I'm compacting. But once I do my uh, sweeping, any of that fine material can get right down in those joints. Thank you for watching this week's tip of the week. Some of these you may already be doing, some may be things you wanna pay attention to in grave detail next time you do your sweeping and compacting. We hope it's helpful. Thank you for watching this week's Tip of the Week. You can sign up for our Tip of the Week here. Or you can watch more of our videos here. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. And make sure you shop our products at pavetool.com. If you're located in Canada, you can shop at pavetool.ca. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Looking forward to seeing you next Friday.